So here we are once again in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the default Barton Aerodrome, that's Echo Golf Charlie Bravo, uh, to look at a new release for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that's the aeroplane that you see in front of you, and this is the Cessna 170B, and it's made by prolific Microsoft Flight Simulator aeroplane developer, Carinado, who uh, don't really need any introduction, they've been making add-on aeroplanes for all kinds of different simulators for years, and they were the first um, third-party developer to get an aeroplane out for um, the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, and they've uh, banged out quite a lot since that first one, this being the, the latest thing. Uh, and in common with their Waco biplane, which they released uh, a couple of months ago, this thing is also very inexpensive. Um, it's available via the in-game market um, and costs uh, just £12, so uh, really very inexpensive indeed. But in spite of that low price, is it worth having? Well, let's find out with this review. So, uh, before we have uh, a detailed look at this thing, uh, let's learn a little bit about the real aeroplane. So, the Cessna 170 was one of Cessna's very, very first, not the first, um, all metal aeroplanes that they uh, put into production not long after the end of the Second World War. Um, the first go they had at that uh, was um, the Cessna 120 and the Cessna 140. And the Cessna 140 uh, is also available for um, Microsoft Flight Simulator, made by other prolific developer, Aeroplane Heaven. Uh, and there is a review, review of that on my channel. And it shares some similarities with this aeroplane. So if you're considering this aeroplane, be sure to have a look at my review of the Aeroplane Heaven Cessna 140 as well. Um, because uh, you might sort of uh, weigh up the two of them and see which one you like best. Anyway, uh, the Cessna 170 was first produced in 1948 uh, and it continued in production with various developments over its uh, production lifespan until 1956 when it morphed into the well-known Cessna 172 by being given a tricycle landing gear and a bit of a redesign uh, and the Cessna 172 is of course the most produced aeroplane in the world um, so this was the the if you like the sort of great granddaddy of the most successful GA aeroplane ever now uh, this is the this is depicting the Cessna 170B so the original Cessna 170 which came out in 1948 was not all metal it had um, canvas uh, covered wings but subsequently they uh, they gave it all metal wings um, clad with uh, aluminium or aluminium if you're a, an American uh, so that's why uh, we're looking at the Cessna 170B rather than the Cessna 170. One of the other things that changed over its production lifespan was the original Cessna 170 had a straight um, platform wing but this thing if we get above you can see um, has the wing taper which is something that the, um, the Cessna 172 enjoys. Um, so it was the Cessna 170 that originally developed that shape uh, and this airplane is also well known for being um, a, a, a sort of um, combined project with the um, the Cessna Bird Dog uh, which is the, the army sort of liaison spotter plane of which there is also one available for Microsoft Flight Simulator made by Black Box Simulations um, and um, when Cessna were developing the Bird Dog uh, some of the things that they developed for that notably the flap system was something that the Cessna 17 um, kind of incorporated so um, kind of an interesting sort of historical line if you like so there you go that's the Cessna 170 which led to the Cessna 172 um, anyway as you can see this is a very nice model aeroplane as you'd expect from Carinado who are famous for um, their modeling uh, and texturing uh, and so you can see this thing stands up to really really close inspection it's very very nicely modeled and very very nicely textured now in the package what you get for your uh, 12 pounds available from the um, the in-game Microsoft flight simulator market what you get for your, your uh, 12 pounds that you pay for this thing is um, three variants of uh, the 172 and by that what I mean is that you can get um, this which is your sort of standard from the factory version uh, you can remove the wheel spats from it if you like uh, and we'll see that in a moment to, to give it a slightly different look uh, and then what you've also got uh, is a specific other version that has um, large tundra tires on it so that you can use it for bush flying so basically you get three variants of it uh, and you get about seven different paint jobs with the thing so um, 
quite a lot for your money um, and you get um, I think it's three PDF manuals uh, with reference files and uh, the old checklists and all that kind of stuff um, broadly similar to what you get with most Carinado airplanes so you know there's a lot there anyway it is a very nice model and you can see that it's got the the standard uh, sort of exterior add-on bits to it that you can display like we can see that there is a uh, a uh, generator that's plugged into it and you can see that it's got chocks on the wheels and it's got cones on the wingtips and stuff like that um, and the the nice modeling as you'd expect from Carinado continues on the inside so let's take a look on the inside of it um, now in common with most Carinado add-on aeroplanes it comes with this uh, this fairly familiar little um, tablet on, that's attached to the um, the control yoke that will allow you to play around with stuff so you can see the static elements which we can turn off and we can get rid of the external power if we want to uh, and what we can also do is we can get rid of the fairings to show you that other version so we go on the uh, outside view you got a bit more of a vintage look to the thing which I tend to prefer um, that when you uh, when you have the spats on airplanes like this um, what they can do in real life is clog up with grass um, and if it's really long grass that you're taxiing through sometimes that can clog up so badly that it can make the thing tip over on its nose so uh, in practical terms it's often worth removing the spats because uh, they don't really add to the speed that much they maybe give it a couple of extra miles per hour extra speed when you've got the spats on um, but they uh, reduce its utility in being able, being able to operate from rough airfields uh, and of course we've got the other version with Tundra tyres on it um, that um, that make it even more useful on rough ground anyway back in the cockpit and carrying on looking at this thing so uh, we can display pilots if we want to and we can display co-pilots these are the Carinado model pilots not the uh, default flight simulator pilots um, <coughs> which means that you can't have a female pilot on this thing which is a bit of a bummer if you're a female flight simmer uh, you can see that there's a GPS on the panel but what you can do is you can turn that off if you want to so if you want to go a bit more old school with your navigation and use this uh, this OBS gauge there you can do that um, other stuff that's on here is if we go to there you've got cold and dark ready for taxi and ready for takeoff pre-save states on there and then what you've also got is you've got checklists which uh, uh, and if you don't want to use those checklists um, they are sort of replicated up on here or at least some of that data is replicated up there uh, and what that also shows is that the sun visors work on this thing uh, we've got an uh, outside air temperature gauge there uh, and we've got a little spotlight up there uh, that we can turn on or off if we want to so uh, you can do that kind of thing if you want to um, now then uh, if I get rid of that thing there um, we'll have a look at the interior of the thing so the interior is uh, very nicely modeled it's got the um, the sort of incidence angle thing up there uh, which um, most tail drag assessors have which is replicated on that side to assist you with getting the right sort of and angles for go when you're up on the main wheels uh, landing or taking off or what have you um, it has opening and closing doors which you can use the handles or you can use that little iPad and it also has opening windows like that and the noise level go levels go up when you uh, open those and you can use them in flight it doesn't cause a crash which it uh, does do on some airplanes um, so that's all that stuff is replicated on the other side so that's kind of nice um, then what we've got is down on the floor you've got the flap lever there you've got the um, the pitch trim um, which I'll stick in a bit of pitch trim there then we've got the uh, rudder pedals on the floor and in common with um, some add-on aeroplanes but not all of them when you release the parking brake you'll see that the um, the uh, the pedals do actually move so good attention to detail there um, in common with most GA add-on aeroplanes you can hide the yokes if you want to um, which will allow you to see this panel a little bit better so let's have a look at what's on the panel uh, and what we can do with this thing because it's got the option for modern avionics or you can use old avionics there is an issue with it as we will see um, 
Now, there is also an issue with the um, cylinder head temperature gauge, which tends to sort of go all the way over to maximum temperature rather than accurately reflecting uh, what the cylinder head temperature is. So there's a little bit of a glitch on that. That's not the, the main glitch, though. Um, we'll see what the, the main glitch is in a minute or two. So we've got a turn and slip indicator there. We've got an airspeed indicator there, uh, red lining at 160. This thing will cruise at, at near around about 140 or something like that. Um, it, uh, you've got an artificial horizon there. You've got a clock. You've got uh, an altimeter. You've got a compass, vertical speed indicator, engine RPM gauge. Then you've got various electrical oil pressure gauges and stuff like that. Uh, and for amps and volts and stuff like that. And then you've got a vacuum gauge there because some of the instruments on older airplanes run off a vacuum which is powered by uh, this Venturi tube on the outside there uh, if you're wondering what that thing is um, and we've got uh, an OBS gauge there if you want to do more old-school navigation on the central panel here you've got a GPS which we'll see turn on when we power the thing up we've got a starter switch there we've got a mixture switch there which is on lean at the moment and I'm gonna get that in because we're gonna be starting it you've got cabin air there um, and you've got cabin heat. Now this thing is not certified for flying into known icing conditions, but what you can do uh, is, since Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, will ice up the windscreen sometimes, what you can do is you can heat up the cabin and that will at least melt the ice off the windscreen. It won't melt the ice off the wings, but you know at least you'll be able to see where you're going. Um, we've got a throttle there, and we've got the magneto switch there, which I will turn on because we're gonna be starting that. You've got a primer there, so you can prime the fuel. Um, we've got uh, a master which we can turn on we've got the radios that we can turn on there we can turn on the lights uh, and we can turn on the landing lights there like that if you want to have a look at what this thing looks like at night let's do that now so what we'll do is we'll turn that to night time there like that and and we'll kind of move around and what have you see so got this light thing up here that you can mess around with Oh, we've got the little floodlight there and what well, on the external view you can see that what we've got is a very bright landing light and lots of bright nav lights on the thing there so um, adequate lighting for if you want to fly this thing at night anyway let's put it back on the daytime view so we can see this thing in all its sort of daylight glory um, now uh, radio stack there with the uh, nav radios and comm radios and then there is a transponder there um, so you could use this on that sim however the issue is that um, this thing I think it's a bit of a holdover from an FSX or P3D version because it is exhibiting the same issue that um, a lot of airplanes exhibited a few patches back in Microsoft Flight Simulator which is that the electrics would fail after about five minutes and we will probably see that on this review so note that the GPS is working at the moment uh, and note that the radios are working at the moment and I can assure you that the my exterior Satec Logitech autopilot is currently lit up but if the avionics fail which they almost certainly will after about five minutes when we're flying this thing around that will mean that my exterior autopilot won't be working the GPS will no longer be displaying and the radios and transponder will not be working now I should imagine Carinado will patch this fairly quickly because in, in recent months they have been patching stuff um, pretty quickly when there have been glitches as evidenced by the fact that their PA28 came out a couple of days before a patch uh, that affected the flaps in Microsoft Flight Simulator and within about 24 hours um, Carinado had patched that so they have been a little bit better of late on patching things and I should imagine they'll get onto this thing uh, this issue fairly quickly <coughs> but at the moment what that does mean is that um, you will be limited to using sort of just the basic avionics you won't be able to use the radio when it fails you won't be able to use the GPS when it fails you could of course sort of blag it a bit with this thing um, and you wouldn't be able to use the autopilot the other bad thing about it was it is that um, if you fly somewhere and land I know if you're having a bit of an explore and you're doing bush flying if you land somewhere and turn off the engine to go and explore somewhere and then the avionics fail because of that bug when you uh, want to get back in simulating getting back into your plane and taking off you won't be able to start it because of the electrical failure anyway let's fly this thing around and see what it's like so um, we've got mm, 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 mm. 
the throttle cracks open a little bit um, and we've got the mixture on fully rich so um, let's give this thing a start so there's the uh, parameter and there's the starter and I'll give it another prime uh, because uh, I've been chatting away and then what we'll do is we'll crank this thing up now I've got the, the sounds on quite low but what I will do is I will turn them up so that you can have a listen to what the engine sounds like so here we go on the sound and then we'll get the um, aircraft engine noise level up like that and I'll hit apply and save um, hit resume and you can hear what the engine sounds like and I'll go on the external view so you can hear that as well and we'll move around a little bit so the sound is changing when you move around in 3D I'll move that back to the inside view and what I will do is I will turn the sound down because I don't think you want to be listening to a review with me shouting over an engine noise um, but you can hear that um, the engine is um, it's pretty good there's a little bit of, of, of evidence of a little bit of looping on there but you, you'd have to listen really pretty hard for it it is recorded off uh, of the real engine of uh, of a real Cessna 170. Uh, the the engine in the real thing is a what do I think it's the Continental C145, uh, which is 145 horsepower. So this thing it's a four seater, but it's got a 145 horsepower engine, which means that it'll probably get up to about 13,000 feet, something like that. Um, so reasonably useful or at least will be when they've patched it to sort out that avionics failure. But um, will see that occur in a minute or two um, if uh, if it runs through to form so I'm going to release the parking brake and then what we'll do is we'll taxi this thing out and we'll do that on the external view so you can see what this thing goes like and what we'll do is we'll have some flaps to take off So in common with most sort of light tail draggers, what you'll have to be careful of is not turning too tightly um, so you don't rock it over and, uh, and put a wing into the ground and you might have to get the elevators back if you don't want that to happen. Um, so we want the stick all the way back and giving it a burst of power to turn. So yeah, not quite as easy to maneuver on the ground as a typical tricycle gear Cessna 172 which this thing eventually morphed into and you have to be a little bit careful about not stabbing the brakes too hard so you have to sort of turn the brakes on and off uh, to bring this thing to a halt but you know as long as you're aware of that it handles pretty well on the ground so anyway back in the cockpit what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the view uh, whereby you can see the rudder pedals because uh, you don't need a lot of rudder uh, to get this thing off off the ground and keep it tracking straight uh, and so let's get into the air so we get it up on its main wheels and you can see it is attempting to veer off but a little correction will will have it tracking reasonably straight so you don't have to go mental with the rudder on this thing so let's get this thing in the air and get the, uh, the rudder off because we're in the air and you'll see that this thing climbs okay uh, and it, it tracks fairly straight even when you're not on the controls there I'll do my clapping my hands I'm not touching the controls and you can see I wasn't moving the rudder pedals on there so what we'll do is we'll get the flaps up and we'll bring the power back a little bit and fly this thing around uh, so you can see looks pretty good in the air sounds pretty good you might be able to hear that kind of like sort of looping sort of phasing sound in the background a little bit um, you have to listen pretty hard for it but you know it's definitely there uh, so I'm just keeping an eye on where the airfield is and there we are we're sort of more or less parallel with the runways now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things 
uh, to check how this thing flies, or rather to demonstrate how it flies. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get power on, uh, and I'm going to trim it up into a climb. And what we'll do is we'll do stall and spin tests, and then we'll see if this thing can side slip, because um, it's usually a good clue as to whether the flight model is is generic or or whether it's it's particularly detailed. Um, but it gets good frame rates and uh, you know looks and sounds good, which is um, sort of fairly standard fare for carrying out. Uh, and you know, it's got a little bit of oomph to it. You can see there, I'm um, I'm easily maintaining a, a, a sort of seven or eight hundred feet per minute climb rate, which is kind of good. Keep an eye on those avionics though. Um, the um, at the uh, control goes back. Keep an eye on the the GPS screen here, uh, uh, and keep an eye on the the radios, um, because you can expect those to go dark fairly soon. Probably just before we land, I would have thought. At the moment, my uh, avionics are lit up on my Satec exterior uh, autopilot panel, but they will go off as well um, when uh, when the avionics fail because of that bug. Anyway, we are now, let's see, uh, we're over 2,000 feet, so uh, let's uh, see what this thing stalls like and see if it will go into a spin. So I'll get the nose up, like that. We'll get a stall warning horn. I'll give it a, a lot of rudder and keep the stick back. And you can see that what it does is it just mushes down. It's not going into some sort of vicious spin. I'll see if I can try and get it to spin by being really abusive on the power. See, even going inverted, um, we got very close to the uh, never, exceed speed, never exceed speed there. Um, but it, it didn't really want to sort of spin. Um, so, it flies okay, but I don't think we're talking super duper realistic flight model here. Um, but then again, how many times do you want to spin this thing anyway? Uh, let's have a little bit of a fly around uh, and get our bearings after having thrown this thing about a bit. So there's the airfield ahead of us. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do, particularly with the um, the the Tundra tired equipment. Uh, equipped version of this um, is probably use it for bush flying so you're probably going to want to be able to side slip it into uh, into small fields and stuff like that and uh, that's not that sort of thing is not normally Carinado's strong point so what I'm going to do is I'm going to help it out a little bit by giving it lots of flaps so that it's very draggy and then what we'll do is we'll see if this thing can side slip Well, there you, are. you can see the things definitely going sideways but you can see that it's not exactly dropping like a stone so you know a, a bit of sloppy flying and it will lose altitude but it's not really doing um, what I would call a convincing side slip um, in comparison to some other aeroplanes which can do that so you know if you're looking for super duper unbelievably realistic flight dynamics um, I, I don't think uh, I don't think you're gonna get it out of this but it's you know in in sort of the normal flight regime um, performance wise it's fairly on the numbers um, anyway, let's head over to the airfield Notice we've still got avionics at the moment, but I'm fully expecting these to go very shortly. Let's, uh, we'll just move away from the airfield a little bit so that we can bring this thing in for a landing. Does look very pretty flying through the air though. Uh -huh. 
There go the avionics. Did you see that? GPS gone. Um, nav radio and communication radio gone. And presumably the transponder not working. Now, um, what we can do with this, if I get this out of the way, we can hide the GPS and just go kind of old school with the avionics. But we've still got no radio. And notice up on the top left of the panel that the cylinder head temperature gauge is all the way over, way past the red line. So not really reading accurately because uh, I'm not really throttling this thing up like crazy. So this thing could benefit from a bit of patching, and I'm fairly certain it will. So I don't want to. I don't want to sort of really, uh, uh, really put you off it um, by pointing these things out because uh, I'm fairly confident that this this thing will be patched within a day or two. Um, so just keep an eye out for that on the uh, on the Carinado site or forums and stuff like that. And if it does get patched, what I will do is I will I will paste um, a comment in the uh, comments underneath this review on YouTube uh, to let people know whether the thing has actually been patched. Uh, as I say, I reckon they'll get around to patching it fairly quickly. Now. This is, of course, a tail dragger, so you know a bit trickier to land than than your typical Cessna 172 um, or 152 or whatever or PA28 with uh, a tricycle undercarriage, but it does have the benefit of uh, a stall warning horn, which should allow us to judge this fairly well. The thing should stall at about 40, so I'll start getting the nose back. There we go. So, relatively easy to sort of like fly it <coughs> until you and hold it off until you get the stall warning, and then hold it off a little bit more and let it sort of plonk down onto the ground. So not as uh, not as tricky to land as um, as you might think. We get the flaps up. And in terms of handling on the ground, you can give it a stab of brakes and a bit of rudder, and that will get it round. And the view out the front isn't terrible, despite the fact that we're sat on a tailwheel. I mean, you can, of course, always weave about a little bit if you want to, or move your viewpoint up a little bit um, to sort of pretend that you're lifting your backside out of your seat to to get a bit of a view over the nose and so let's taxi this back into position So with the exception of sort of slamming the brakes on running the risk of getting this to pitch over on its nose it is fairly easy to handle on the ground uh, and you can see there with the length of the grass on this airfield the benefit of uh, of removing the, the the spats or using the tundra tired equipped version that you also get um, and uh, plenty of paint jobs for this and they expect people to go mad and paint it like crazy and stuff like that um, and it's inexpensive. It definitely. I'll. Uh, I'll just uh, cut the engine. So we get a shutting down sound and a nice spin down of the prop, which is allied quite well to the sound of the engine cutting out. Uh, so it is a really, really lovely looking representation of a very, very historic aeroplane there with some nice touches in it, you know, like the opening doors and the opening windows and all this kind of stuff. Uh, great modeling on it and great texturing on it inside and out. Um, it just needs to have a little patch uh, so that the GPS will work and the autopilot will work and the radios will work. Um, 
and as I say, I'm fairly certain that um, that Carinado will be on that pretty quickly. So I wouldn't let it put you off too much uh, because I'm fairly certain that this thing will get fixed at some point. But you'll notice that now with the avionics not working and the electrics on, I'm going to hit control E and you can see that it turned the magnetos on and uh, it was moving the mixture levers and stuff like that but that thing was not um, and is not starting so um, they definitely need to sort that but um, for, for 12 quid um, and the fact that the patch will be yeah, I'm, and I'm sure there will be a patch would be delivered via uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator means that it's a fairly easy fix for Carinado to do so I wouldn't let that put you off just just keep an eye out for, for when they've patched it and then uh, then consider this but check out the um, Aeroplane Heaven Cessna 140 review which is also on this channel uh, and see if you might prefer that one because uh, it's a sort of similar aeroplane and it doesn't suffer that problem and it's got um, very very similar options in terms of uh, tires and spats and all this kind of stuff um, and that's got a GPS built into it uh, and if you are interested in all the information that you get from uh, from reviews like this and videos that I do um, then uh, what you can do is you can click the subscribe button um, and what that will mean is that you get an email notification of when I upload a new video but not not only that you know um, I think it's nice when people subscribe and put comments in the uh, in the the chat bit underneath and what have you. Um, so um, yeah, join the club, hit that subscribe button, uh, and then you you can see all the reviews. And there are some interesting videos coming up uh, on this channel uh, very soon because uh, I'm back working at Manchester Airport uh, in aviation, working on the airplanes and stuff like that. And it is my intention to, uh, which it was my intention before all the COVID lockdown. To, to make some videos so I've got all that in place and I'm going to be making some interesting videos concerning uh, all the uh, all the stuff that I do when I'm working on planes so uh, if you're interested in all that kind of thing um, hit that subscribe button and then you'll get notifications of when all those videos uh, come up but in the interim um, uh, that's it for this Carinado Cessna 170B uh, I think it's very nice I think it's definitely worth the money uh, and even more so when they've they've patched that little glitch but don't let that put you off too much you can still fly the thing round um, and use that thing there to navigate and follow the magenta line on that and just just fly it manually without the autopilot uh, while you're waiting for the patch to show up so uh, for, for 12 quid yeah I think it's okay you know what I mean um, but yeah, as I say, before you actually uh, throw 12 quid at it, check out the uh, the review on this channel for the Aeroplane Heaven Cessna 140, uh, which is a two-seater uh, rather than this four-seater. Very, very sim similar looks, and see whether you'd prefer that. It's a little bit pricier than this thing, but um, see whether you prefer that. Anyway, that's all for now uh, from Chocks Hangers Quick Shots. Uh, take care, everybody, and uh, I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye.